scrap everything I've been saying about benchmarks before because I didn't know what I was talking about. Recently, some of you guys suggested that I take a look at the Gamers Nexus blog to learn how to benchmark games properly. And holy moly, I was in for a treat. It turns out that I was doing it all wrong. I should not have simply trusted the numbers that the games gave me. In this video, let's go down the rabbit hole of benchmarking games on Linux, shall we? This blog from Gamers Nexus is quite old already and none of the tools he suggested is available on Linux. But I was able to distill the essence of the post. According to Gamers Nexus, it is meaningless to focus on the maximum and minimum frame rates. Instead, we need to find out the 1% minimum, 0.1% minimum, and average for a specific time range. He suggested to use a frame rate logging software and analysis software to see the results, preferably using the frame rate logs recorded inside the game's built-in benchmark. Even though the tools he suggested are not available on Linux, worries not. The open source community got us covered. I went on the internet and found this, a tool called MangoHard, developed by the Flightless Mango. It is an FPS logging software which can produce log files available on all the major Linux distributions. The developer also created a website that can analyze the logs uploaded by its user. Not only can it produce the 0.1%, 1% and average FPS, but it can also output 97% maximum FPS. Finally, users can start and stop the analysis in-game by using a key combination which seems to have covered all the requirements from Gamers Nexus post. Let's see how easy it is to use as a Linux gamer. The installation was quite straightforward. I started by using the Flatpak version in my Fedora gaming setup. Nothing special to mention here. Then I typed mangohut command in the launch option box in my Windows bottle launched Red Dead Redemption 2 and was able to see the overlay. I went to the graphical settings section, started the benchmark. I hit the left shift with F2 key right before the benchmark started. I could see a red dot showing up on the overlay. After the benchmark finished, I used the same combination to stop the FPS logging. I can see a basic analysis after that. I got 125.6 for the 97 maximum FPS, 30.4 for the 1% low, 15.4 for the 0.1% low, and 70.4 for the average. According to Gamers Nexus, this means the average low is 30.4 FPS, and I was getting 15.4 FPS when it lags, compared to the game's inbuilt result, which was 23.6 minimum, an average of 44.55, and a maximum of 75.6, which I think are more accurate because the game has a lot of blackout loading screen in the middle, which produce 120 FPS that are also counted in the Mango Hot result. So I redid the Mango Hot log with the final bit of the benchmark which has the continuous animations and it gave me a closer average of 42 and a lower 97% high of 60. I think this is more in line with the in-game benchmark results because the final bit animations do not include any scenery rendering that has slightly better FPS which are counted inside the built-in results. After that, I could see the log files under my home folder. I didn't spend much time to check where the config file was located on each level mentioned in its GitHub page, but it seems that logging was enabled by default, and changing the output folder option inside the configuration in the .conf folder didn't take any effect. I uploaded the log file to the MongoHut website, which gave me not only the same result, but also a bar chart. The only issue is that I wish the website could include the 0.1% low as well. After seeing the Flatpak MongoHut working on Flatpak bottles, I opened up Steam, which was installed as a native app. I added the same launch option for the Assassin's Creed Origins 
and tried to fire it up. The game didn't launch at all. I added the mongo command to the game option inside of Ubisoft Connect. The game worked, but no overlay. I also tried enabling the Ubisoft and Steam in-game overlay option, but the game crashed. I saw there was an alternative way of setting up Steam games, which was to add the mongo hut equals to 1 inside the shell. I exported it in the terminal and started Steam after. Still no go. Fine, let me uninstall the Flatpak Mango Hut and install the Fedora native one. This time the game in the Flatpak bottles stopped working and Assassin's Creed had no issue booting up with the launch option added on the Steam level. Again, I ran the game's benchmark using Mango Logger. I got 17.5 FPS as the 0.1% low, 44 FPS as the 1% low, 67.3 FPS for the average and 89.4 for the 97% maximum. Compared to the game's inbuilt result, which was 78 92 overall frames and 66 average FPS, Mongo Hut showed a similar result. And the good thing is that I can start comparing this game with RDR2. Now I can confidently say that Assassin's Creed runs better than RDR2 on this 2019 Asus G14 with a GTX 1660 Ti mobile card inside. If this is a more standardized measurement that other YouTubers are using, then this is awesome. Because it is available on both Flatpak and native format for all the major distributions which means it should be easy to install, moreover, easy to use. The only thing to keep in mind is that we need to make sure all the gaming applications are installed with the same package manager. If I have bottles installed by Flatpak, I need to go for Lutris, Mango Hut, and Steam with Flatpak, and vice versa. This is because Mango Hut does not work well across environments. Finally, I can measure all the games using a single tool. Thank you for watching and sorry for the long wait. I was busy moving from Toronto all the way to the west for the past month and still haven't finished all the things. Without taking time off from work, I had no energy left for making any videos. But now I'm back. I will try to slowly pick up the pace again. Thanks again for all the constant activities on my channel during this time. Oh, and after a lot of people pointed out that Linux users should not feel lonely, I applied for a talk in Linux Fast Northwest 2023, and my session was accepted. So if you have time to visit Seattle in October, feel free to come around and say hi. It will be my first public speech and I hope it will all go well. I'm super nervous about it, but I wish I could get to know new people in the area. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.